the painting is about humanity's identity and how we connect and fit into the natural world. Hi, my name is Sarah Blanks. I went to Riverside Girls High School and my painting is Elixir Vite. My idea was inspired by the Romanticism movement, a poet called John Keats, and I just really connected to the philosophy personally and was interested in how they expressed that philosophy through their art. The sublime I sort of portrayed through the miniature figure and the huge rolling landscape and the dramatic sky. We're at the mercy of um, the natural world. The two paintings on the side are exploring sort of sensory imagery. The water, the fingertips on the water is her, the figure, coming into connection with nature getting that healing that we get from that humbling landscape. My painting was made using a Flemish painting technique, which was sort of traditional and close to what old masters would have used. You tone the canvas with undercoat, so an imprimatura. I did a like a golden, a light golden, which is what you see in the the sun, the horizon in my painting. You sketch out your darks of the painting and then go in with a white and then you start to add your color. And from that point on, I did glazing opaque paints and then transparent paints. So that layering creates that sort of depth to the painting. So you can actually see there are layers. The last painting is the portrait of her. You don't see her face because it evokes much more of a sensory feeling that way. It's, it's a metaphor for how I believe that humans should interact with nature and our relationship with nature. It's much of a returning to our origins. If we tell people about history, we can truly love one another for who we are and never repeat these atrocities again. And I think that is how we can truly move forward. My name is Jinu Park. I am from Newtown High School of the Performing Arts and the title of my painting is Tonight Again, The Wind Brushes the Stars. The concept behind my work um, comes from my life experiences, to be honest. Uh, living in Korea for a few years, I could see the remnants of the colonial past of the Imperial Japan's occupation from 1910 to 1945, almost like visible scars. So I asked myself during the beginning of the process, how am I able to convey the emotions and the context of each photograph through a still image. So it was my intuition to work with symbolisms, motifs and techniques. Um, for example, the white is a symbol of the Korean people and the peace that has been going on before the Japanese um, colonization. And I've used the brush strokes, very expressive brush strokes, very violent ones, to convey and elicit the, the turmoil past that we have experienced. I would say I chose to use the monochromatic scheme throughout this artwork as a way to show that this is truth. These are almost as if they were documented through video, and which in part is as each of these paintings are based on real photographs. But it also works as a tool to highlight the ones that are in color, such as the one with the, the Comfort Woman statue. I deliberately made that statue the only color throughout the entire artwork as a way to show that it's a symbol 
of purity because the statue is about peace. It is viewed as a statue to commemorate those who have lost their lives under turmoil times, especially for the very young girls who have had, should have had a future. Um, so I think in that regard, it talks about the human rights. My idea came from a holiday away with my family. We went to Nepal and we did a 10 day hike through the Himalayas. So I really wanted to put that um, amazing journey into my work. My name is Caitlin Russell. I go to Innerborough High School and my body of work is called Himalayan Elements and is a collection of works. So the photo of the mountains was taken by myself and my dad was also in the picture but I cropped him out <laughs> um, and that's just done in black and white paint. So I've also got um, some fabric from the flags and I cut them out into little flags and thought it would be a good idea to glue them across the painting. I really wanted to do a portrait and I wanted to do an interesting face. I found this image online from an unknown photographer unfortunately, uh, but I've cropped the image to just her eyes and it is done in lead pencil. I started with a light pencil, probably 2B, and ended up with my, eight, my darkest, probably 6B, 8B pencil to get the really dark lines. The really long strip is a bridge with some yaks on it, which you can find in the country, um, and that is done in ink, pen, and then I've got some, a series of small lead pencils of dogs. There were hundreds of dogs everywhere, all over Nepal, some strays, some not, and I just thought it was such a memorable feature of the country. I just really wanted to do a little bit of memorabilia about them. So the Himalayan uh, kind of belief in like the flags is that they all represent a different feature of how the earth was created. So we've got wind, uh, earth, space, water, and they all come together to create harmony. And it is believed that once they are hung above the ground, that it will um, spread peace and harmony all over the, the country. So I really wanted to put that beauty into the, my artwork. So I've got the beauty of the land, the beauty of the people, and the beauty of the animals as well. Reading manga and watching anime was my hobby, so watching the same style influenced my painting style. I'm Bonnie Dong, I'm from St George Girls High School and my painting is called Departure. I was sketching my mum sleeping on the plane and my teacher saw my sketch and said to continue exploration of travel. I took a lot of photos between school and home on the train, probably at least 200 and sketched out those with good compositions and then painted it. I didn't use a fisheye lens for my first painting. I created the distortion via sketching. I used acrylic paint with a lot of water to make a flat looking style. I was being very careful while learning how to paint since it was my first time using acrylic paint. So I worked very slowly and tried to work very carefully. There was no particular influence from the beginning, but my substitute teacher introduced me to Edward Hopper and I used his composition to create one of my paintings. I liked the look of Edward Hopper's composition as 
The man he positioned was in the corner of the photo and that made him look very isolated, which fit my theme. I was trying to show how one person can be absorbing their own thoughts in isolation and how it was very part of the human inclination of being by oneself. I had a hobby of painting my nails, so I had already have a technique of painting very flatly and in very divided shapes. As I developed my work, my painting became more flat and more precise. I like how being able to learn how to paint with acrylic also made me able to learn more things without hesitation because it was a difficult journey. I usually hesitated towards tasks which were tough. Now I'm able to approach what I want head on instead of fearing it. Each image came to me very spontaneously. Some look like fashion magazine pictures, some look like surreal photo edits with multiples of me in it. And I feel that having these multiple different forms and compositional styles is what really does reflect the absolute fluctuation of my mental health throughout this journey. My name's William Todman, I'm from Blackson High School. My piece is titled Love, Its Absence in Society and Why I'll Never Achieve It, and it is in photo media. My piece started off as an expression of why love doesn't exist in society. I started in a very dark place, um, I was not mentally stable, but as I began to seek help and take medication and psychiatry, um, it was able to morph into a journey of mental health and growth and discovery of my sexuality, rather than this depressive piece about love and its absence. So to take my photos, I had to set up this rig that controlled the camera wirelessly via my phone. I suppose in the limitations that I was given, it almost allowed me to micromanage and adjust the images to just how I'd like them and be able to compose them in a more thoughtful manner. Photography is my preferred medium. It's a skill that's easy to pick up but hard to master and I admire it for that. They started off being heavily photoshopped, heavily beautified and stuff in Photoshop. But as the piece moved on and I became happier with my appearance and happier with myself, I began photoshopping it less as my self-acceptance became more of a focus rather than my self-critique. I hope that when the audience sees my works, they take away from it the vulnerable nature of it. I hope they realise how much effort it goes into to um, exposing oneself in such a way, especially in the neighbourhood I was growing up in, which wasn't super accepting of gay culture. So coming out as openly homosexual was something that really was a passion for me and an emotional journey as well. My body of work is about the concept of perception, how we perceive ourselves, the people around us and the world and how it affects our way of thinking, our morals and really the way we live our lives. My name is Patricia Turner, my body of work is called Perception and I went to Kirawee High School. The self-portrait was first and the whole concept of the piece stemmed from the self-portrait. The eyes in the work directly symbolise the concept of perception, growth and enlightenment. 
I've always been a person that has to do with anxiety and upon discovering the concept of perception and a different way of viewing things, it really helped me overcome my fears. I was inspired by surrealist artists such as Salvador Dali, René Magritte and James Gleason as I really admired the surrealist practice. It allows a very free subject matter, but it can also be done in a lot of detail, and I really like that. The hands in the work represent the beauty of sensory experience. The baby's breath in the piece represents the softer, more innocent tones in the work, essential for self-exploration and growth. Contrasted with the symbolism of the moth, the moth represents a more darker tone in the piece. Our ability to be subject to desire led to a flame like as if we were a moth. The darkness behind it and the light is just representing the human condition and how everybody has that contrast behind them. The paintings are oil on canvas and I've never used oil paints before this point so I researched, watched a few YouTube videos and just played around with the medium until I had a bit of a feel for it. What I love about my art practice is I see it as a very big form of self-expression. I just get to channel all my thoughts, my soul into one thing. It's just, yeah, I love it. Perfection is in various aspects of our life, so whether that be academically, socially, relationally, we're all trying in some way or another to be perfect in our lives, despite it being something that you'll never achieve. I'm Lily New and I'm from Shire Christian School. My um, body of work is called Progress Over Perfection. The idea of progress over perfection is conceived out of my own inability to deem an artwork as complete. Um, I'm a bit of, of a perfectionist myself and I've always strived in all aspects of my life to be perfect at everything besides it not being something that's ever actually achieved. We would have um, photo shoots at lunchtime which was a great bonding experience. I'm very grateful for my friends. I would show them what pose I kind of wanted, give them a kind of character which they would embody by themselves and really turn it into their own which I was very grateful for. As you can see in my work, each of them, they have their own personality and it really shines through. I knew I wanted a linear composition. I knew how many people I wanted. Obviously my work is very large um, and it's like a big scroll. So I would have to roll it up, put it in a big pipe, like a PVC pipe and take it to and from school. And also actually working on my work, it's very large as well. So I'd have to again, scroll it out on a big table. I couldn't just work on it wherever I wanted. I needed specific areas to do it. So I drew using graphite pencil. Um, I only used 2B and 4B. As you can see, there's not much like depth to it. It's quite washed over and soft. And that was again, to suit my kind of perfection ideal. Um, because if you look at the actual characters themselves, they're a combination of realism and kind of like doll-like is what I was trying to achieve. Because I worked in graphite, it's obviously a very fickle material. It can move around a lot before you set it. So I'd have to put um, baking paper over my work as I went. And I was very careful about not getting any fingerprints or damaging it in any way because it's paper, it's very easy to damage. It was a different medium for me. I'm used to working in baro pen. Um, so I decided to step out of my comfort zone, try graphite, something I'm not perfect at, and really um, explore that. I drew it as I went, in a way. Instead of planning my work out to be perfect, I went with the flow.
I've always loved swimming. I grew up as a water baby. I was a competitive swimmer from a young age and I really wanted to incorporate the human body and water and how that light can fragment in the water. I'm Kyra Gilfillan. I went to Woolware High School and my painting is called Immersion and Fragmentation. I went down to the beach. Uh, my mum took thousands of pictures of me swimming, diving, splashing, those fragmented lines, the water moving the colours around, just so I could have a mass like group of things that I could work from. I used acrylic paint and an impasto um, mixture with it to make it thicker. It was really a struggle in learning how to paint the water or the shapes, lines, colours to create a whole image. I really had to go in and work on each small section. I could just simply fold my paper into a little square and look at that exact area that I wanted to paint so I could look at it with my mind and put it onto the um, canvas. It was very, in a way, abstract, but from far it looks altogether unreal. I did the largest one first. That one can be like a metaphor of almost a fetal position. It's the start, it's the beginning, it was the hardest, it took the longest, the beginning of your HSC year. The second one was treading water, keeping head above water. You're in the middle of HSC. The middle one, swimming up to the light, on the way. And then the last one was this one, it's the end of the journey. It's, um, it's the most abstract and um, fragmented, but it was the easiest for me because I had learned so much along the way. I worked on not trying to create a, a real life look. I had to really go out of my comfort zone and underneath water, lines are blurred, colours jump around, lines jump around. That's what always intrigued me was how there can be two different worlds. I wanted to honour my grandparents and through art and through drawing I was able to create this unique piece and incorporate slides and photos from the 1960s and bring it all together to honour them and their, their life. Hi, my name is Claudia Kennedy. I'm from Woolooa High School and my body of work is titled A Tribute. So throughout the process of my work, I was experimenting with different charcoals. I discovered that I love compressed charcoal, how you can do dark shades, go over it with the rubber and it creates nice highlights. I've heavily used the rubber. On the other hand, willow charcoal, although it's nice and smooth to apply onto the paper, it doesn't allow for the rubbing effect. One day me and mum were looking through the old vintage slides and I was, I remember just saying, wow, they've lived such amazing lives. My granddad was an engineer so they travelled. There's pictures in there of their honeymoon, their travels to Hawaii, Japan. Granddad's life as an engineer working in the snowy mountains. Incorporating the slides into my piece, I feel adds to it because the whole purpose of my work was to honour their life and a tribute to their adventures. This year I am taking a gap year. I'm going to do some travelling. I'm happy to just travel and yeah, figure out what I want to do this year.
My work kind of delves into the passing of time and I think as I've gotten older I've become a lot more reflective and that's kind of shown through the memories that I've chosen in my work. My name is Amy Crow, I'm from St Patrick's College at Sutherland and my drawing is called Remembering. I was looking at like a camera I had when I was younger and it just kind of inspired me to work with those memories and like those experiences. So I started with like the memories I had when I was a kid that were very powerful to me and that kind of just stuck in my head. So I decided to choose those and try and find pictures that kind of best represented them. But to do that, I also looked through old photo albums to try and find other images that kind of sparked that memory as well. I've drawn everything, but I've used coloured pencils, lead pencils, and like a fine ink pen to just like add detail to them, yeah. With the soldier crab, I found that that image in my head was very like vivid with the blues, so I found that if I used coloured pencil, I'd be able to achieve that. And I thought that if I did everything in lead pencil, it wouldn't be as like powerful, because some images I had in colour and then some weren't, kind of, yeah. <laughs> By using the VHS tape, I tried to make it a bit more universal because all these experiences are very personal to me, but I wanted to try and like have people experience the nostalgia themselves. Drawing is a really good way of like letting your creative side flow while you, like you can have something on in the background and also draw, so it's kind of like, I don't know, it's a fun thing to do, like I find it a lot more accessible because you can just kind of pick up a pencil and start drawing. 